Two identical small spheres of mass 2 grams are fastened to the ends of an insulating thread of length 0 0.60 meters. The spheres are suspended by a hook in the ceiling from the center of the thread. The spheres are given identical electrical charges and hang in static equilibrium with an angle of 30 degrees between the string halves. Calculate the magnitude of the charge on each sphere. Before we start answering this question, take a good look at what is happening. We have two spheres whose mass is known and they're both identical and in between the two spheres that are hung by these two strings is a 30 degree angle. What we're looking to do is to find out the charge of these two spheres and to do that we'll be using Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law looks like this and it's shown underneath for reference. We have force is equal to a constant k which is given times q sub 1 times q sub 2 over r to the power of 2 where r represents the distance between these two spheres. Since both of these spheres are identical, q sub 1 and q sub 2 can simply be denoted as q. So I'll make note of that where q1 and q2 is q. And it is q that we are looking for. So I'll solve for Q first, and then we can start the physics portion of this question. To solve for Q, we use some basic algebra. I'll multiply both sides by R squared. And then we have R squared times the force is equal to KQ. We divide both sides by K, and this isolates for Q. So Q is equal to R squared times F over K. Now it's important that once you find Q, whatever that value is, it gets square rooted. And the reason why is because Q represents two identical charges, Q1 and Q2. So just be mindful of that when the time comes. I'll shift my work to the side. Now that we've prepared this formula, we can actually start to replace some of these variables with what we already know. For example, k can be replaced with 9.0 times 10 to the power of 9. So I'll go ahead and do that. And as you can tell, we still don't know the distance between the two spheres and we don't know the force. So that's what we are looking for. Let's focus in on one sphere only. So if we focus in on one sphere, Given that it has a mass, there is a force due to gravity that is pulling this sphere downwards. And I'll call that force F sub G. In addition, since both of these spheres hold a charge, and given that they're identical, there will be repulsion between the two. In fact, there will be a force that is being exerted in the opposite direction for both of these spheres. And that's represented by this arrow right here. For reference, I'll call that force F sub E, where this subscript E represents electrical force. And remember that whatever is happening here is happening over here as well. So there would be a downwards force and there would be a force going in that direction. Now generally, if we were to add these two forces together, we would get a resultant vector going in that direction. We don't know the magnitude of that resultant force. In fact, it's not even important. But the reason why I'm telling you that the resultant force is going in this direction is because that for every force vector, there is one that is going in the opposite direction that is equal in force. In fact, that's one of Newton's laws. So the one that's going in the opposite direction here will flow along the string. And there will also be a force going in this direction and a force going up. All three of these vectors in black are the opposite of the ones that I drew earlier. This is very important because now we can set up a series of equations that relate these two vectors with that one, which we will call the tension. The tension always acts in the opposite direction of the gravitational force, which is what we're seeing here. This one will be Fe, and this one will be Fg. Now, knowing what we know about trigonometry, what we can do is split this 30 degrees into 15 degrees. So we have 15 here, 15 here, 
we have a 90 degree angle, and the angle here will be 75. And again, knowing what we know about trigonometry, we can now use sine and cosine to relate the tension with both this vector and that vector. So if I wrote down cosine at an angle of 75, that relates the adjacent, which is the magnitude of that vector, representing f sub e, to the hypotenuse, which is represented by t. So the adjacent is f sub e, and the hypotenuse is t. If I solve for force in this equation, I end up getting t times cosine 75 is equal to fe. And similarly, if I use sine at an angle of 75 degrees, that relates opposite and hypotenuse. The opposite being the magnitude of this vector, and that vector is f sub g over the hypotenuse, which is the tension. Let's go ahead and solve for force in this equation. So I'm going to highlight these just for clarity. And the nice thing about these two equations that we just created is that if you focus in on this equation, the second of the two, f sub g can be calculated by simply taking the mass times the acceleration due to gravity, which is a constant at 9.8 meters per second squared. And the mass, which is 2.0 grams, needs to be converted into kilograms because the unit of force being newtons is in kilograms. So we'll change 2.0 grams into kilograms, which is 0 0.002 kilograms. And I'll place that number right here. Multiplying these out, we end up with 0 0.0196. 0 0.0196 newtons. And we can actually take this number and replace f sub g with what that is. Notice how these two formulas both have a t. And what we're looking for is f sub e, which we could eventually place into this formula to help us find q. If we could somehow set these two equations equal to one another, then we can solve for f sub e and eventually get what we're looking for. So I'll use a little bit of algebra to solve for t in both of these equations and set them equal to one another. Let me show you what I mean. So I'll start by solving for t here, where I have t is equal to f sub e over cosine 75. And solving for t here, we get t is equal to 0 0.0196 newtons over sine 75. I can now set these two t's equal to each other. And we end up with a proportion that can be easily solved. We can use the technique of cross multiplication here, where you multiply both sides by each of the denominators. And you will end up with Fe being the number on your screen, which is 5.125 times 10 to the power of negative 3 newtons. All right, so now we have f sub e, which will be placed into there. And we still need the distance r, the distance between these two spheres. That shouldn't be hard to find at all. In fact, we are told that the length of the string is 0 0.60 meters. So I'll draw out another triangle for you here on the side where, remember, that is 75 degrees. And since it's 0 0.6 meters running from here all the way to there, that means half of it will be 0 0.3. Now, using what we know about cosine, cosine is a comparison of adjacent and hypotenuse. So it's the adjacent that we're looking for, and that will be multiplied by 2 to get the distance between this charge and the one that would exist over here. So we have the adjacent, which is what we're looking for, divided by 0 0.3, 0 0.3 times cosine 75.
that will give you half the distance and we'll multiply whatever we get here by 2 and that will serve as our R value. So on our calculator we have 2 times 0.3 times cosine 75 and we end up getting 0 0.155 meters. Okay, so this is what will be placed, A standing for adjacent, what will be replaced in for R. Q is equal to 0 0.155 raised to the power of 2 times the force we found here divided by the constant of 9.0 times 10 to the power of 9 Newton meters squared per coulomb squared. And remember, whatever answer we get needs to be square rooted. Using our calculator, the number on your screen raised to the power of 2 times 5.25 times 10 to the power of negative 3 divided by the constant and all of this gets square rooted. Where we end up getting, and we need this to two significant figures, 1.2 times 10 to the power of negative seven, and we are left with this unit of coulombs for the charge.